Okay, okay, no, man. No, man. Right, right now. now. Okay, hey, here's my wallet. What else you got? Uh, uh, that's it, man. Just a wallet. You stay right there. Okay. Don't stay right there. Don't you move. Don't you move. Uh, uh. Don't you move. Welcome to First Person Defender. You mean me? Where regular people come face to face with unknown attackers in real world scenarios and fight their way out. This is First Person Defender. Today on First Person Defender, we're in New Hampshire at the Sig Sauer Academy. We've got Christian and Amanda, both from Chicago. Christian carries, Amanda doesn't. But are they ready for what we throw at them? This force on force training uses real firearms converted to fire marking cartridges. The crew wears yellow shirts and are considered to be invisible to role players. A pleasant stroll amongst shops turns into a nightmare for Christian and Amanda. Can they escape? Can, uh, just go look for uh, a new phone because I really need one, a new one. Okay, I want to get a new uh, cover for mine. Okay, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, you see your hands. No one needs to get hurt. Okay, I just yeah. want your fucking money. Okay, stay right there. Okay, don't, don't move. Just okay. listen to me. Okay, right? yeah, man. Fucking wallet on you. Uh, you have a wallet. Stay yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Your wallet, your cell phone. Okay. Throw it right here on the ground. Okay. Keep your hands where I can see them. Okay, yeah, yeah. No yeah. one needs to get hurt. I just want your money. Okay, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Don't We're, do anything yeah. stupid. Don't be a hero. Okay, no, man. No, man. Tell me right now. Okay, yeah, here's my wallet. What else you got? Uh, uh that's it, man. Just a wallet. You stay right there. Okay. Don't, stay right there. Don't you move. Don't you move. Index, index. Tell me what happened. Well, uh, we got, uh, somebody came up behind us. We didn't see anything. Uh, he had already had a gun drawn out. We were compliant, but uh, I didn't know what his intentions were. But I mean, he had us at gunpoint, so he could, he, we basically had our lives in his hands. I kind of threw my wallet in such a way that it might, uh, it might be distracted. And when I saw an opportunity to uh, defend ourselves, I, I uh, shot. You got in a gunfight? I did. Tell me what were you thinking, what were you feeling? Uh, I, I just, like, I, I was standing back and I was kind of trying to separate from him just to, like, yeah. so that the guy had two things to pay attention to. That was pretty so. intense. How did it feel? Like a little nerve wracking. I'm like, do I run? Do I stay? Do I slowly back up? He was pretty aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, he was pretty aggressive. He had a gun to us and, uh, you know, our, our lives were in his hands. And when you guys exchanged fire, you got shot. I did. So uh, one of the things I noticed about Eric when he came up to you with the gun drawn is he said, I just want your money. I just want your wallet. When someone says that, we may not want to go right to the gun. The end state was you gave him your wallet, but yeah. then you felt uh, compelled to try and game it. Uh, what I would advocate in this case, potentially, very situation dependent, give him the wallet and go away. Think about how many problems you've solved up to this point in life without a gun. Right. Quite a few, right? <laughs> so uh, just because you have it doesn't mean you need to use it. You're going to have some medical issues like you suffered here today with yeah. the leg shot wound. I've been wearing this all day. No one's seen it, but I've got this capability on me with normal pants on to have an actual soft teeth tourniquet, a chest seal, and some quick cloth. Three eighty versus nine millimeter. We like to argue about it, but let's test it. We've got the Inceptor ARX bullets. We're gonna shoot them into gel and see what we get. Now for the nine. Okay, three eighty. Pretty good penetration. We're using this clear ballistics gel. Just an apples to apples comparison. Uh, the nine, we did not catch it, and hopefully this time we'll catch that nine. Second time around, oh, we caught it. All right, wow, it didn't even go into the second block. This is the 380 block, about 13, almost, call it 13 and a half inches. The nine, 15 and a half. So 13 and a half inches with the 380, 15 and a half inches with the nine in this clear ballistics gel. Pretty close performance between both of these.
Now let's talk and focus on the medical side of things. Uh, first thing we're going to discuss is that whatever medical uh, kit I have, it needs to be on my person. It can't be my vehicle or my house or my car because I'm not going to be able to necessarily get to it. So a quick assessment, uh, I would only carry things that I needed to stop uh, massive hemorrhaging, maintain an airway, and, you know, the major things that would get me to the hospital. What I would focus on is something to stop massive hemorrhaging, which is, would be a DOD or a T-Tri-C certified tourniquet. And that's going to be your soft T or your uh, CAT. And then the other thing I'd have is I'd have some hemostatically impregnated gauze. Okay, so I'm going to take the D-ring off, find the wounded arm, and this is gonna go up as high as possible, just like that. And make sure that the windlass here is on the outside so I have access to it. Make sure the triangle link is, has access to it and isn't buried in the armpit. Once I do that, I'll make sure that it's taut and I'm gonna take as much slack as I can out of that tourniquet. If I don't do that, when I start to turn the windlass, it will bind up too much and it will take a lot longer to actually constrict and compress that brachial artery. So at this point, I'm gonna take the windlass and just turn it, this won't feel great. And I'm going to turn it until I stop bleeding. And I would confirm that by reaching down here to that radial pulse, where it was, and realize that it's not there anymore. Now, with the practical application here, even stateside in an emergency, you're not going to have long-term tissue damage because you're going to be in a hospital before you know it. So we're not talking about leaving this on for three weeks. This is just a temporary stop to make sure that massive hemorrhaging has stopped to allow the paramedics or the ambulance to get us to a higher level of care. And then turn, does it matter? Yeah, then you're gonna turn, and what you'd be looking for realistically is wherever the wound was uh, that was here, mm -hmm. you'd be looking for it to stop actually bleeding. So massive hemorrhaging is gonna manifest itself in a very specific way. If it's at night, we're gonna do it until we get some significant resistance and then get out of town and white light it to make sure that we actually stop bleeding. And then obviously the first thing we wanna do, going back to the initial problem is get 911 there, start getting the bus there, Right. police medical units there and then physically move uh, away from that spot sure. first person defender brought to you by ruger gondelio springfield armory and shopguntalk.com Working with the Ruger American Pistol Pro Duty model. Well, the Pro Duty means it doesn't have a thumb safety. And personally, I like that. I've shot a lot of pistols, thousands and thousands of rounds through guns without a thumb safety. But some people say, I just feel more comfortable with a thumb safety on the gun, which is fine. There's not a right answer or a wrong answer on this. It's just a matter of practicing. For me, if I come up with a gun with a thumb safety on, I forget to take off the thumb safety. But if you practice with it, you become proficient and you sweep that thumb safety off every time. You don't have to think about it. That's what you want to do. For me, no thumb safety. Hey guys, I'm here at one of Six Hour Academy's Live Fire Shoot Houses here to talk about the appendix carry draw and the low ready position. So if I have a threat and it's not a gun, maybe it's a knife or a bat, something where I have a little bit of distance but I still don't have an egress route, one of the things I can do once I access withdraw and get that gun out is I can maintain it in a low ready position. Now the ready position is great because it allows me to have good muzzle management and still be able to see things. If I mount that gun too quickly, one of the problems I'm gonna have is I'll be able to block what I uh, can see with his hands with the gun in my own hands. So I need to assess whole person hands and demeanor and one of the things that the sights about the ready position, particularly the low ready, is that I can see that and then quickly mount the gun up on target if the situation escalates. I can try and verbally de-escalate here, but if it comes to it, I can just simply mount the gun, see those sights, and go to work. That mounting process will happen a lot faster than it will from the draw. So the low ready allows me to have good muscle management, have great awareness, and still mount that gun quickly. So, if I see that threat, try and verbally de-escalate. De stop, 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 let me see your hands. If he keeps progressing because of the threat, I simply mount that gun. So 
So guys, in closing, uh, the appendix carry draw, clear that garment, access withdraw, and get into that low ready if the situation deems appropriate. Remember, low ready is a great position so if I need to have that gun ready to go, but I don't want to cover my target for whatever reason, lots of different reasons out there. It offers me a quick access to drive that gun up and get on target while still maintaining good muscle management, good situational awareness. The Springfield 911, real small carry gun, and it even comes with a pocket holster, which I like, it gives you that option. So you have to practice the way you're gonna carry it. In these pants, I stick it in here, it tucks away, you can't see it. When I go to draw it, the holster's coming out with the gun, that's not what you want. But this would work fine in a lot of other pants that I would wear. So you have to get to the range, or just at your home with a dry gun, Practice your mode of carry, make sure it works with your wardrobe, and adjust accordingly. In this scenario, Christian and Amanda are out shopping when trouble approaches. Quick thinking and training need to take over to come out alive. I think the store's over there, but... Yeah. So, no, I, I, we don't have anything there. We don't have anything there. Oh, God. Wait, how's going? Oh. Ah. Oh, no. oh, babe, I've been shot. I've uh, been shot in my arm. 911? Here. 911? Oh, Here, let's, let me okay. dial 911. Hello? 911? Yeah, there's been a shooting. I, I've been shot. Please send an ambulance. Yeah, I'm a, in a, a blue, blue shirt. Please send. Yeah, just get that just up. Just outside the, app, uh, the store, the phone store. Okay. All right. That was kind of... Breathing stops. Okay, do feel pulse? Yeah. No? Okay. I think we're okay. Let's uh, maybe just move, move out of the way and just see if we can kind of get to safety, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. uh, 911, we're just moving to a store. And uh, uh, can you help us? Uh, please, please help. Chat. Um, okay. Yeah. Go ahead, sit down. Okay. And we'll just rest here. Okay. okay. All right, next. Guys, it started out the same way. Sure. Yep. But tell me what you were seeing and what you were feeling. I uh, saw somebody come up and, and ask for money, and uh, we didn't have any money to give. Um, I kind of noticed somebody in the distance, and I did notice them, and they were kind of just acting a little suspicious, kind of looking down. Um, and as they came up, uh, just pulled out a gun out of nowhere and just shot, shot me in the arm. Just a random shooting. Just a random shooting. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the weird part is, as weird as that is. That really happens. Oh yeah, Amanda was able to uh, apply a tourniquet and uh, you know stop the bleeding. What did you see? Oh, uh, guys, great job. Uh, a couple small things. You know, when that happened, you got you took around in the arm, but you dropped right down. One thing you could uh, consider down the road is actually staying on your feet and moving. You okay. Know, maybe you want to actually move. Certainly do that concurrently. Uh, good job with the phone call, right? That's one of the things we try to do concurrently. So I heard you getting on the horn, calling 911, letting know what happened. Yeah. Uh, 38 seconds, just a little bit under that. Time to get that tourniquet on before you start to move. So plenty of time there. You would have stopped the bleeding. So great job. If you didn't have this or didn't know how to use it that could be fatal in a couple minutes. Wow, it's a real eye-opener uh, to uh, think about you know, your skill sets and where some of the deficiencies lie. If you carry a firearm, there's a good chance that you uh, are, are gonna have to do some type of trauma care. It's not actually restricted just to that either. I mean, you think about car accidents, kid falls off a tree, any sort of trauma, malicious or not, uh, this is gonna save your life. <laughs>